Hi folks, this is uh, Slick Slices. Um, I'm sorry, we seem to, I don't seem to be having much time to make too many videos at the moment, but uh, one that I missed out last year, that I should have done, it's a knife I've had for about a year, was this here, which is a Michael May knife. I was reminded about it because Michael has recently put up three videos on of him making different types of knife, a Clayton Barlow, a Damascus blade, and one of these, it's a different wood that he was using at this, on this particular video. But I'll link to the video for this below. There are only um, a handful of videos on his channel and he's, I think he's got less than 200 subscribers. But in terms of, if you'd like to see a video of a handmade knife being made, it's probably one of the best videos out there. There, there is a really good one, um, or a couple actually from, uh, Taylor's Eyewitness and from George Wustenholm uh, that are quite old, uh, but the but this one these one he's done these are ones that he's done recently in the last few weeks. You can see the knives on Instagram as well, but it's really quite nice to see a proper what we used to call in in um, England little mesters, little mesters each had their own little trademark under the uh, cutlers of Hallamshire. And this is the the uh, shield of the of Hallamshire, which was what's now, it's part of Yorkshire, it's where Sheffield is. So the Sheffield knife makers are little mesters. Uh, this was their uh, county crest. And this is a Michael May knife for Barlow, which I did a video on last year. And if I um, am clever, I will remember to try and put a link to this video below. This is a work back Barlow with a carbon steel lamb's foot blade. See the tang mark there, M. May Sheffield. And if you half fold the blade, uh, you can see underneath it says England. So M. May Sheffield, England. Never liked that, by the way. I wish I do wish you could see the uh, the whole of the maker's name without having to fold the blade. Although this is actually quite traditional. When you look at older knives, antique knives, you quite often see that as, as being the being the case. That's just the way it was seems to have been done in days of yore. Now there are other people who make who make handmade knives to different differing degrees. This one here is a hand is really a hand finished knife rather than a handmade knife. This is the bokeh. It's a very nice bokeh. Um, with a gold action, tree brand, gold leaf etching on the blade. And I don't, I don't like this. I, I don't like Barlow's with um, shields on scales. It's got a lovely bit of desert ironwood there and somebody sticks a blooming great. And not particularly attractive in my mind. Shield in it seems a shame. I prefer the plain wooden scales. And if you're going to put anything on a Barlow, you put it on the bolster here where it belongs. Now, this is sort of hand finished but it's not it's not truly really handmade and that's reflected in the fact that it's absolutely impeccable completely faultless and that's a good thing but it also can make it appear slightly soulless it's turned out of a factory um, on a production line process even if there's a lot of hand finishing involved and this here is a GC uh, number 85 bulletin jack in Tidute and finish. Unfortunately, I don't have a wooden one. If I had uh, if I had one with the wooden scales, it would have fitted with the rest. But this one is acrylic. Um, acrylic is easily derided as a, a product, but actually, I like acrylic. And some of my um, most precious things are acrylic. For example, I have a collection of Mont Blanc pens. These are my daily use pens that I've had for thirty odd years, and they're in black acrylic. Um, this is the ball pen, but the fountain pen is around somewhere can't see it but it's on desk somewhere um i think they cost seven or eight hundred pounds now for a for a plastic fountain pen but very beautiful so i can see the value in a, in acrylic as a hand material plus it gives endless opportunities to create things like this salmon acrylic which is a sort of slightly pinky mother of pearl effect with these sort of fish patterns in it um Really, really nice knife. Now, what I wanted to say about this, though, is 
it is handmade. It's completely handmade because that's kind of the way that GEC do it. They do it in a way that Sheffield did it in the larger factories around the early, late part of the 19th century and the early part of the 20th century before everything became mechanised and there was so much outsourcing and offshoring and so forth. But uh, when the little mesters were coming to an end and the factories were taking over, the GEC style factories, similar in many ways, except of course with modern uh, health and safety and, and uh, helmets and goggles and all the, the protective stuff that people now have, that just uh, hearing protection, for example, just didn't exist 100 years ago. But... Um, this is made in, in that sort of style. In other words, one person does a batch of one stage and another person does a batch of the next stage. But many people's hands will have been on this knife before it reaches the door. Um, that has produced beautiful, consistent quality. It's absolutely... They, I mean, they, they are the, the pinnacle of uh, pocket knives available in the world today. If you want to reasonable costing i mean there are there are makers there are there are a number of makers who will charge you six or seven hundred pounds to make you a knife not dissimilar in size and style to this on a custom basis but from a factory produced knife these are the best uh, of their type probably in the world available today but they have they are a, a kind of factory produced knife there is a production line process involved and that means that there are a number of these out there, a number of 85s, I don't know, will, will be in the hundreds or thousands, a number of 85s in acrylic will certainly be in the tens, if not necessarily the hundreds. This knife is not unique, I don't own the other one. There'll be somebody out there watching this video today and say, oh, I've got one of those. Um, I've no doubt. This is a similar uh, sort of situation. This one is not a, from Germany. Again, beautifully produced and um, really nicely finished, really well made, no gaps or anything like that. But uh, again, there is nobody, no one person can say, I made that knife. And there are lots and lots of people out there who have that knife. And that's good in one way, because if I recommend that knife to somebody, I can know for certain that the one that they get will be the same as the one that I got. Or, if it's not, they'll be able to send it back and get one that is. Um, but, if we take those out of the, out the, out the equation, actually, because though they're sort of handmade, they're not made by one person, they're not artisan-made knives. Now, in Sheffield today, there are a number of makers still um, doing handmade knives, and one of the larger volume ones is uh, this is Arthur Wright that made this one. Now, Arthur Wright has a terrible reputation for poor fit and finish. I mean, this one actually isn't bad. But then again, these are £20 knives. Now, if they were made in China, they'd probably be £6 knives. But because they're made in Sheffield and people are actually paid half decent wages and half decent rents and rates and contributions to the health service and all the other things that a manufacturer has to do when you're in the United Kingdom. It's a £20 knife. But for £20, I think it's not a bad little knife. They have incredibly strong actions, um, which um, never seem to ease much over time. And they always come blunt. I put an edge on this one. I gave it an edge when I did it. It's one of the very first ones I did with my Lansky sharpener when I got it. It's not, I've not made it perfectly straight, but it's relatively shiny and very sharp. So I was quite pleased with that. But um, I believe these are pretty much artisan made, but in a high volume um, with relatively low quality standards. Um, Now just, this isn't, isn't really applicable to the other knives here, but just to show you some of the fit and finish errors that you can have here. You know, this uh, huge big gap in here, the um, total asymmetry of the, the, the bolsters and the scales. So as though on this side here, they pressed it on the belt sander just a wee bit too long while he was chatting to his mate on the next 
uh, thing and realised you got it too thin, then didn't bother to even it out here and ended up with one thin bolster and one fat bolster. And then they sold it. I have another one with a tang stamp is almost illegible, which just is the ultimate sin to me, you know, putting your name on it, skew with. But, you know, I like these if, if you're after a cheap handmade knife. Um, but there are a couple of the old manufacturers. I say I'm, I'm not talking here about the uh, Xing Chans of this world that you've just seen a video of, uh, of mine, where uh, using modern materials and so forth. These are manufacturers that are using old style machines and making knives in an old style traditional way of the little mesters with one person making the knife from uh, start to finish. Uh, stamping out the pieces, uh, cutting the blades, um, for, for assembling the knives and um, uh, uh, hafting them when they're done so that they come out as beautiful works of art. Now this one is by one of my very favourite knife makers in all the world. This is by um, Lee White of Taylor's Eyewitness. And if you've ever watched my channel, you know, I am Lee's number one fanboy, as you probably realise. Uh, his brother Richard used to um, make knives and there's, uh, oh, what's her name? Horn. Is it Gail Horn? I don't know. Made a couple of videos. Uh, one with uh, Richard White making, um, I think he's making a stockman. Certainly making a, a handmade Taylor's Eyewitness Sheffield knife. Um, now, when Richard's brother left Taylor's Eyewitness, the uh, person that made these knives was a guy called Michael May. And Michael May made this one. And 13, 14 minutes or something into this video, I'm just about coming to the reason that Michael May um, is significant. Michael took over. Um, before he left, he trained up Lee. Um, I don't know if he's the only person that trained Lee or whether, you know, it was part of the... Uh, it was part of the, the thing. But um, Michael then took over from Lee and then, from Richard, and then Richard, uh, Lee took over from from Michael. Did I get that in the tall straight? Richard, Michael, Lee. So, take that out of the way. We've seen enough of those recently. Um, but hopefully, well, there's never enough. But anyway, this is the one I really wanted to talk about. This is Michael May's ergonomic work knife. Now, I'll just move this because helps with the focus. Uh, now ergonomic, you look at that and you think my hand doesn't look like that, that is not possibly ergonomic. But this is very much taking the spider coat approach to knife making. Um, when you look at a spider coat, I, when I look at a spider coat, I say ugly, horrible, don't like it, yuck. But you put them in your hand and they kind of fit and you think, mm, yeah, I know what they're getting at. Sal and Eric are not idiots. They know how to design a, design a knife and they do a blooming good job. Well, this is pretty much the same, except that we're talking about uh, a sub three inch bladed UK legal traditional pocket knife. So making it the really the outlandish shape of a uh, spider coat isn't going to happen. But just look at the way that the thumb, the first finger, the next two fingers wrap around and there's still a bit left over for the pinky but you've also got a widened palm swell around where my thumb's pressing there so it's sort of slightly fatter in the middle there and you've also got this swell base at the bottom with this really quite heavy lump of brass on it which actually holds the knife quite well in your hand it's just i'm just about to drop it obviously but anyway this fits as a really good ergonomic work knife it also works um, if you want to turn it to cut that way it uh, has a, a sort of pinch grip hold to it but most of all it just fits in your hand falls into your hand just nicely and i've got quite big hands i think if you had smaller hands it would fit even might even fit even better but i wear um extra large gloves so you know i've got quite big hands it's beautifully made it's got this lovely uh, file uh, spine that goes right up into the blade just in the same way as 
uh, Lee White does with the Taylor's Our Witness Knives. I think where this one, if you were doing a comparison straight with Lee's knives, you could say that the degree of polish and shine on the Taylor's Eye Witnesses is a degree higher, but I don't want to criticise Michael for that. It's really important that you don't because this knife, I think, was about 60 quid. I think it was maybe 10 pounds extra for the file, so 60 or 70 quid. Whereas uh, one of these is double that. So if I'm quite sure if you said to Michael, I want a knife that's as shiny and polished as that, and he would say to you, well, I'll do that, quite happily to do that, but um, it's going to take me a few more hours and it's going to cost you a bit more money. Whether it would cost same more or less than Taylor's, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't know. I've never asked him. But um, this one has a sort of satin finish to the blade. He's a carbon steel, by the way. And again, you can ask him for what you want. Um, it's just the third video that he's just in the little batch just now is uh, Damascus steel blade with uh, Damascus it's actually made in Sheffield rather than Damascus um, again it has his uh, Michael May Sheffield England stamp and again you have to half fold the blade now I mean I I criticized for that but it's completely unfair of me to do so because it's very it's very traditional of Sheffield knives I think a lot of that is because um one of the things with the little mess is somebody might specialise in making blades and somebody else might specialise in making the pieces for the frame of a knife. Somebody else might specialise in cutting blocks of wood and so forth. And then somebody else would specialise in assembly of, of knives or finishing of knives or filing of the backs of knives or whatever. So uh, somebody would be buying in these blades and then fitting them to their handle. And it might not necessarily be the case that the tang was stamped with that handle shape in, in mind. Um, so it's not a fault. It's just that's the way that it was. it's always been done. So there's no reason why it shouldn't be done like that uh, today. Nice swedge on this blade as well, by the way. It's quite subtle. You, you kind of have to be looking at it. But is this one of those knives that you get it and you could imme immediately say it's slightly could be slightly underwhelming and then you look at it and you look at the work that's gone into it and the, the detail and the finishing and that lovely bit of wood and the really nice you can the brass you can either polish it I like shiny so I tend to try and keep it polished or you can let it patina um, or you could do you probably even do a forced patina like a nice slice this just did on his uh, proper uh, bench made proper with brass scales which was absolutely phenomenal I don't know if I'd have the um, chutzpah to to risk getting that wrong because that could go really horribly wrong it's not gone wrong in his case but you know whether you'd want to try that with a, a knife that you are particularly um, beloved of anyway that's the michael may ergonomic uh sheep's foot pocket knife it's really really good you, you if you order a knife from him you, have, you do have to wait because he makes them to order it can be six or eight weeks i think um, and I think he got a bit behind with the COVID crisis, but I believe he's catching up. Seems to be working very hard. The um, childcare issue has become an issue, I think, these days with, uh, yeah, um, with the COVID crisis. But he's certainly getting there. He makes a lovely knife. Now, I have to say there are one or two people who have had less than stellar experiences with some of the Michael May knives. And it's not been my experience. That's all I can say. And he's been very responsive to me. Um, maybe that's because he knows I'm, I've got a channel. I don't know. I don't think that's the case. But um, all I can say is I, I will tell it as I see it. And as I see it, he makes beautiful knives, really, really well, does a really bloody good job with them. And I will be buying some more. Um, I'm, just, I'm just waiting for to, the COVID thing to calm down. Plus, uh, I've bought too many things of late. So I'm trying to calm that down a little bit. But later this year, I'm hoping to get uh, at least uh, one or two more. And I really want to see if given a free reign and a reasonable amount of money, how good a knife he can produce. And I'm quite sure he can do this quality. Um, but I ordered two, this one and and this one, two of his sort of budget range. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have any more of these bolsters, but that's a shame. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you... Uh, mad enough to like any of this stuff please feel free to 
give it a thumbs up and um if you're uh if you want to subscribe uh please do i don't know i, I can't see myself being very prolific over the next few months um but so long as we're here please feel free to subscribe and i will keep showing what i've got thank you bye